All right, so this could be our notes on free fall. Uh, we've been looking at motion and looked at how to measure it, like uh, velocity, speed, and acceleration. And now, then we looked at what causes uh, motion, and that is a, an unbalanced force or a change in force. And uh, now we want to add something new uh, to the motion that we've been talking about. Uh, initially, we just talked about like kind of straight line motion, of an object moving from po point A to point B, a car moving, you know, 10 miles down the road. Uh, whatever or you know whatever your mousetrap car but uh, we're going to learn something a little bit different and you probably have some ideas about it perhaps you completely understand it that's perfect if you do but it's this idea of free fall and free fall free fall is when a mo is where is motion where an object is under just the effect of gravity uh, so if we let me draw you a picture here so if we stand if we had a cliff here picture you're standing up here and you had a ball you applied a force to this ball or not so far eventually though the force you applied stops and then it starts to drop right okay and then this ball just keeps going until it hits the bottom right wherever that is now uh, when you initially throw the ball you've applied a force to it once that force is then equaled out or uh, something cancels it the, then when the ball starts dropping uh, it is under something called free fall and that is just that means the ball was just under the effect of gravity okay and uh, we we note that by saying uh, the acceleration due to gravity so uh, you can say the acceleration of any object whether you drop a, a baseball 50 pound weight, whatever, you drop it off this cliff, it's always going to have the same acceleration. It doesn't matter to the Earth, uh, the size of the object, it's always going to apply the same amount of gravity to it. Okay, It's force that applies. Now there's other factors that affect uh, you know, the force that applies, and we'll talk about that in another video, and you'll watch some of the other videos and I think you'll understand a little bit. We're just talking a little bit about free fall here. So free fall is just when an object is, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. Okay, and that is very predictable, which is kind of nice about it. And there's two equations we use. It's velocity, you know, under gravity, is going to be this gravity, this thing right here, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the amount via time it's been in the air. If we want to do distance, it's one half that acceleration, which is this one right here times time squared okay and uh, we'll do a couple practices here in a minute there's some other forces that affect it here actually and air resistance will do certain things and cause objects to slow down somewhat because you know if you drop um, some things like a piece of hair or a piece of paper that's flat if you drop that and you drop a ball they hit the ground at a different time and that's because of air resistance and surface area and uh, we'll come to that in a minute. But so let's say, just erase this. So if we're trying to figure out uh, the velocity of this ball right here, and let's say uh, after two seconds, let's say this is two seconds right here. Let's see. Let's see. So all we do is we plug it in V equals 9.8. Times two. So the velocity of that would be, if we did our calculator, we would say it would be it changes. It'd be nine point eight times two. It would be nineteen point six. We'd write that in. And then the unit for velocity is meters. Per second. Now this one matters because the unit of acceleration is meters per second, so this unit's unit must match and the time must be in seconds. So if it's a longer period of time, you can't just say a minute, it has, you have to convert that minute to seconds. Okay, so that's a velocity. And if you want to do distance, well how far after two seconds will it fall? <coughs> Same thing, d is one half, I'll just leave that there. The acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. And 
and then we're going to do the time, two seconds, and that's going to be squared. Then we do our calculations. Let's bring that back. And we're going to go 9.8 times 0.5 <coughs> times 2 squared is going to be 4. It's going to be 19.6 .6 meters as well. Okay. So uh, it kind of works out to be the same. Probably should have chose three seconds or something. Might be uh, make it a little bit more realistic for you, but just worked out that way. So 9.8, yeah, 19.6 is your answer. Okay. We could then just check it. So how far would it be after three seconds? So if we do the same thing, one half, 9.8. And then we do 3 squared, and we would do the math, so 9.8 times 0.5 equals times 9 equals, it would be 44. Just another second later, it's even further, right, 44.1. Well, how fast would it be going after that time? Let's just put 44 in there for now. 44 and the distance again would be matching acceleration so it'd be meters and let's do this one up here so velocity let's go to bring that 9.8 down and then we're going to times it by three this time so when we do that 9.8 times three 29.4 is its velocity <laughs> So we'll put that in there. So they stop matching up. I just picked two, and that time it matched up. But you can see, you can calculate no matter what the object is. If you drop it off something, it's just in free fall. It's easy to calculate velocity and distance. Make sure these are in your notebooks. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. You can always rewind if you don't have them in your notebook. Make sure you add this kind of stuff to your notebook. And then I just need to finish this up. Okay, so the last things we want to look at here are this idea of uh, terminal velocity. And if something is falling, it's kind of talking about when something falls for a really long time, due to air resistance, it slows it down enough to where it no longer accelerates. And it just stays where it's accelerating. And that's terminal velocity. And that does happen to some objects, and it's due to friction. Okay, so, and also there's something... Uh, you can think about free fall. It also has this uh, behavior to it, uh, especially if you throw the object in the air. And it's a parabola that looks like this. So uh, if you're a person, you're standing here, you throw a ball up in the air like this, and it'll come back down, right? So here's the ball here, here's the ball here, here's the ball here. And here's something really unique about it. If we were standing or at the ground. Um, so when you throw the ball, you know, with a certain speed, okay, uh, it has this maximum height it can reach. Then, once it gets here, uh, the acceleration due to gravity takes over, and then it pulls it at a real constant speed, okay. And this parabola is often something we'll see associated with free fall. And we're going to talk about uh, some other type of uh, motion as well in maybe a week or so and you know, it'll tie into this parabola type thing and so that's kind of the note, my short notes for free fall make sure you add these to your note to your notebook and uh, let me know if you have any questions